a man who was so severely handicapped that he had to be carried and placed there at the gate. And this man's condition was of long standing. It appears here that his condition was congenital. He was born lame. He was crippled from his birth. He never knew the joy of being able to walk or even to stand. There he sat, plying the only trade that he ever knew, begging. And as he sat there asking for a handout, a gift of some kind, he caught Peter's attention. Then Peter, speaking for himself and for John, said, look on us. Hearing this, the beggar's response indicated that he expected a gift of money. Little did he know that what he was about to experience would be inconceivable to the human mind. I want you to think about what's happening here. I want you to travel back with me to that ancient time. Let your imagination transport you back to this Nocano gate, to this man who's born a cripple, expecting to receive some kind of gift. Silver and gold, said Peter, have I none? But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. From a human point of view, this was impossible. A command impossible to be obeyed but this command was given in the name of Jesus the one in whose hand was all power in heaven and in earth and I believe that there is something significant about the using of the full description of Christ first we have the name of Jesus, which speaks to his birth, his ministry, his death, his burial, his resurrection. Then we have the title Christ, the anointed one. This speaks to his divinity. And third, we have him identified as coming from the city of Nazareth. So that when Peter speaks this mighty name, there is no mistake as to who Peter is talking about. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Then Peter takes the crippled man by the hand and immediately, immediately, not next week, not next month, but immediately, this man stands on his feet. He doesn't have to claim anything. He just stands up. Think about it. First time in 40 years, this man stands up erect. This is truly a miracle above miracles because here was a man who was born blind, who was born crippled, never walked, and does not need to learn how to walk. Now that's a miracle all by itself. But not only does he walk, but he leaps. And so he goes into the temple with Peter and John, no longer a beggar sitting at the gate, but leaping and walking and praising God as he goes into the temple. This miracle, this miracle caused a great crowd of people 
to assemble. Then Peter preaches another sermon, a powerful sermon, one equal to the sermon that he preached on the day of Pentecost. And the Bible tells us that there at Solomon's porch, where, where Peter preached this tremendous sermon, 5,000 people believed. Did Peter's enemies, did Christ's enemies rejoice? On the contrary, Peter and the rest of the apostles were arrested. And the next day, they were hailed into court, into the presence of the Sanhedrin. And they asked them, by what power and in what name have you done this? And here, the Bible says that Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, I love that piece. A lot of folks make fun of the Holy Ghost. Filled with the Holy Ghost, and said, ye rulers of the people, and elders of Israel. You know, this is another miracle. Because just a few days earlier, this same Peter, around the fire with a little maid and a few nondescripts, denied that he ever knew Jesus. He was so filled with fear that he, he denied he ever knew Christ. But here, he is no longer faced with a little maid. He is no longer faced with a few people standing around a fire. He is now addressing who? The rulers of the people and the elders of Israel. And he says, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, and by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified and whom God hath raised from the dead, by him doth this man stand before you whole. Peter made, it, Peter made it very clear that it was through the name of Jesus that this crippled man received his physical healing. Likewise, and this is very, very important, through the name of Jesus only, the human soul, crippled by sin, can be healed spiritually, which includes the forgiveness of our sins and a reconciliation to God. And I believe today that in this age of ever-increasing skepticism and incredulity, there is a need to call us back to the gospel message of the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ. Perhaps never in all human history has the truth of the gospel been so grossly and hopelessly misrepresented as it is being today. And this among people who call themselves Christians. Either they spend all of their time telling you how you can be prosperous and healthy, or they are so vain in their beliefs that there is nothing clear and definite in their preaching. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, there was a time when everyone knew that one had to be born again or at least converted. 
You, many of you remember the mourner's bench, and if you've never seen one, you've heard about it. You've heard of people testifying how they were converted. You, some of those old uh, slavery idioms, how they uh, swung over hell on a, on a spider web, and how that 